Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to create DVDs and Blu-ray discs using Adobe Encore CS6. Well, before I start to link stuff up, let's figure out how we're going to make our button highlights look. When I click, see this green rectangle here. This is a region which is created by Encore based upon the size and shape of all the elements in that button folder. Remember it was parenthesis um, plus capital three, the number sign, close parenthesis. Well that says everything in this folder is a button group and it defines the button region for me automatically. There are th three button states, and we can preview them by these three buttons down here. Click on this button. This is the button at normal state. Normally the highlight's invisible. Click here. These are our buttons in the selected state, and these are our buttons in the activated state. Now you would only see one of these highlights based upon whichever button was active at that moment. It's showing you all of them so you can get a sense of what the colors and placement look like. Well, except you probably have noticed that the color of the selected button and the color of the activated button are the same color. And it's a pretty garish white, actually. So I want to change this. Now this is where things just get completely out of control. Because this region here, although it may be called a button, Adobe calls it a sub-picture. But how do we change the color of the sub-picture? We go to the menu and we change the menu color set. This just took hours to figure out. Let's make this as complex as we can. I click the menu color set. Now I'm able to change the color of the buttons. Remember there's three states, normal, selected, and activated. There's our three states, normal, selected, and activated. So that's our first three. Within each of these three states, I have three color sets, one, two, and three. So the first color set has a 0% opacity, totally transparent, such that when I click on preview, okay, the buttons are totally disappearing because that's set to zero. In the button color set one, for selected, it's set to white. There's our white. And for the activated, it's set to white. Well, it's impossible to tell the difference between selected and activated, so it's time to get out the heavy artillery. By default, your menu colors are set to automatic, where you can't make any changes. Instead, we're going to set this to menu default. This allows me to make changes. Again, my normal is still set to 0% opacity, which means totally transparent. My highlight group 1 is set to this really tasteful orange, which just doesn't match any color at all that I've got that, that makes any sense at a 47% opacity. So I'm going to double click this color. I'm going to change it to a green. And we're going to change it to a nice light green right about there. You know, you could make it any color you want. Just sort of select it and click OK. Then I'm going to change this and I'm going to set the percentage to 80%. I'm going to change this to a dark green. So we'll click right about here. Pick a nice spring green kind of color and click OK. Look at what's just happened. That's our, boy, that's ugly. OK, let's set that to 80%. Oh, that causes my eyes to hurt. Let's just move this green down a bit here. Much better. OK, so I now have, as I go from preview, invisible, selected, pale green, and a dark green. Okay, so that's my first color set. That's the one that we saw inside um, Photoshop. Let's just change the color of number two. We're going to make this a blue. Pick a nice light blue, sky blue, and we'll pick a darker blue. I'm just clicking on the color, sliding down here, right about there. So we got a light blue and a dark blue. We'll make that 80%, and we'll make it 80%, just to make it darker. 100% is 100% opaque, 0% opaque, and what you're doing is you're really just sort of blending the button with the background. Pick whichever one of these you like. I tend to pick right around in, in the 80% area. I don't want it totally opaque, but I want to have it be dominant in the frame. And we'll click OK. Now here's where the magic occurs. Watch this. I want to have this be one color. I want to have these be a different color. So right mouse click on the picture itself. Right mouse click, say Edit Menu in Photoshop. Boom, there it is. I'm going to twirl down button number two. 
Notice that inside here, the highlight layer is labeled parenthesis equals 1. I'm going to just double click it to change the text and change the text to parenthesis equals 2. That assigns it to the second color group. Double click this. Change this to parenthesis equals 2. It's in the second color group. Save it. Switch back to Encore. Look at that. First color group, green. Second color group, blue. There's our lighter colors, and there. Is that cool or what? I can create it inside Photoshop, have it dynamically linked into Encore, change my button colors, and say, you know, that has got to be the ugliest thing I have designed in the better part of three months. And I go back to Photoshop and fix it just by changing a simple setting. It becomes dynamically linked into Encore. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to create DVDs and Blu-ray discs inside Adobe Encore CS6. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 89. By the way, membership on our website is a great value. Do you need to stretch your training dollars? A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. At an incredibly low monthly price of only $19.99, you get more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple, Adobe, and Autodesk software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Thanks.